your name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, as I open my mouth again today, send forth your word with power. Let it save the souls of the children of men into your kingdom. Let it transform believers to become excellent, excellent disciples of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Today we are going to continue with our discussion on Genesis chapter 3. And this is light from Genesis chapter 3, episode 3. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and read again from the beginning. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord Jehovah had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, Of the fruits of the trees, of the garden we may eat but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god hath said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die let's look at something in verse one i want us to take note of the language subtle the word subtle is speaking of being cunning cunning this serpent was a very cunning animal very deceptive and the scripture says the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord, which Jehovah God has made, is the ASB. Let's, uh, let's look at the King James Version. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So the serpent was the most cunning animal, animal as of that time. Let's look at this in the New King James Version. Now the serpent was more cunning, look at that, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So the serpent was a beast of the field. Let's look at it in NLT. NLT. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. So the serpent was the shrewdest. That means was the one with greatest cunning wisdom among all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. So the serpent was a wild animal. This serpent was a wild animal. Hallelujah. Let's look at it in the NCV, NCV, New Century Version. The snake was the most clever of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. So it was a wild animal. And let's, let's go to Amplified Bible to get more light. Now the serpent was more crafty. Look at that. In bracket, subtle, skilled, in deceit. Look at that. That was that serpent. Skilled in deceit than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. Hallelujah. So this serpent was skilled in deceiving people or other creatures. Now, that was the serpent. Apart from that, at this time for this temptation, the devil himself employed the serpent because he knew that the serpent was already crafty was already skilled in deceit, in deceiving people or other animals. So the devil chose to use this crafty being to do his work. Apart from the natural skill of deception that this serpent had, Satan again entered into it. Satan anointed it with greater anointing of deception and hypnotism and seduction to use this serpent against the race of Adam. Let's look at proofs for this from the scriptures. Now let's go to Revelation to see how Satan anointed the serpent at this time to do this wicked work of deception of Adam and Eve. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. 
and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found anymore in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him hallelujah that's it this place confirms that it was the devil at work in genesis chapter 3 behind the scene hidden in the mind of the serpent of genesis chapter 3 the serpent was physically there but the devil was inside him speaking and trying to seduce and deceive adam and eve let's also look at revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 3 revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 3 and i saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless feet and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be lose a little season so look at that verses two and three Reveal the deceptive work of the devil. And he's called that old serpent. And he lay hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So the old serpent of Genesis chapter 3 is what is referred to here. And the devil entered into that serpent to deceive Adam and Eve. And the devil is still doing that today. He enters into people around you to deceive you. It is very unlikely that he will come to you physically. But the devil often enters into people who have access to you to deceive you, to make you go the wrong way. Some of these persons may be people you love and who are very dear to you, who are very close to you, who have easy access to you. So if the devil is having a problem in deceiving you, he's going to try to enter into somebody close to you to deceive them and through them to deceive you. That was what the devil did for Adam. He had a problem in accessing Adam all by himself because Adam knew the word of God accurately. But he saw that he could attack the woman and deceive the woman. And through the woman, deceive Adam. And that was what he did. That was exactly what he did. And you have to be on your guard not to allow Satan to deceive you. Through dreams, false dreams, false visions, through putting ideas in your mind, through people who are dear to you and very close to you, by deceiving them and sending them to you to deceive you. You have to be on your guard against this. Hallelujah. Now, another point we want to make here is that whatever you will not eat, that you are not supposed to eat, don't smell it. Don't savor it. Don't hold it in your hand and begin to say, how does it smell? Does it smell good or how does it smell? Don't do that. If you are doing that, you are going to allow Satan to deceive you that was one of the mistakes of eve here god had said that fruit should not be eaten so you have no business holding it in her hand uh, you need to make it a policy of your life whatever you are not to eat don't savor it don't smell it don't say does it smell nice that will be a step into falling into deception a woman you are not supposed to go to bed with it's not your wedded wife don't begin to Try to look, does it look good? Or does it does it look somehow? You take up take up your eyes. Take up your eyes from the woman and fix your eyes on your own woman. If you don't have a woman, ask God to give you one. God will easily do that for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In line with that, whatever God has told you not to eat, don't look at it too much. Don't look at it twice. Don't look at it twice. If God has said, if God has said to you, don't do this thing or don't eat this thing, keep yourself far away from that thing. Don't begin to look at it. Don't begin to look at another woman. That God has said, don't sleep with her. She's not your wife. Or another man that God has said, don't go to bed with him. He's not your husband. That was the mistake he made here. He was looking at the fruit. The serpent invited her to look at the fruit. And she fell for it. She should have said, no, I don't need to look at it. I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. Another mistake that the woman made here was that she failed to trust God. She failed to trust God. You need to trust God and believe God more than anyone. Never doubt the love of God and the integrity of God. 
The woman Eve doubted the love of God and the sincerity of God. That was why the devil was able to get her. Let's go again to Genesis chapter 3. And the woman, okay, let's start from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So the serpent accused God of deceiving the woman, accused God of not being sincere with the woman. But instead of the woman shutting up the serpent, say, No, the Lord is faithful, the Lord will not deceive me. If the Lord says it, it is so. Instead of that, the woman fell for the deception of the serpent because she failed to trust in the love of God and in the sincerity of God. Look at verse 5. Verse 4 again. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, look at that, that was, that's a mistake, and that it was pleasant to the eye. So she was looking at it. Don't look at what God has told you not to eat. Don't look at what God has told you not to do. Don't look at a woman God has told you not to sleep with. Don't look at a man God has told you not to sleep with. Any woman that is not your wedded wife, you have no business sleeping with her or touching her body. Any man that is not your wedded husband, you have no business going to bed with him or touching his body or allowing him to touch your body. Hallelujah. He fell for this deception because she opened the door further for Satan by her mistrust. In God by failing to trust in the love of God and in the faithfulness of God, in the sincerity of God, resolutely. If she had trusted resolutely in the love of God, in the faithfulness of God, in the sincerity of God, she wouldn't have believed the serpent at all. There would have been no inch of place for the serpent. She would have just told the serpent, shaking her head left and right, saying, No, 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 don't tell me God lied to me. God will never lie to me. God is righteous, God is faithful, God is sincere. I trust him. Get away from here, you serpent. But she didn't do that, sadly, and she fell for the deception of the serpent. So to allow, to ensure the serpent does not deceive us, we must make sure we always and at all times resolutely trust in God that he is faithful, that he is loving, trust in his love, trust in his faithfulness, and trust in his sincerity. Trust that he will never lie to us. The Lord will never lie. And believe that whatever he has said to us, that is the truth. And it should not and should never be compromised. And anyone who says anything different or suggests it is a liar and should be told to get away from our presence. Hallelujah. Our time is up for today. We have to stop here for today. Father, we thank you for the word you have sent for today. What are the word in the hearts of all the hearers? Let it save their souls into your kingdom. Let it empower them to operate in perfect love. In their work with God, let it empower them to trust in the faithfulness and in the love of God and in the sincerity of God. Let it empower them never to give the devil any place, but to always tell the devil, get away from my presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. This Word of Life program is coming to you through the mouth of God's servant, Uluwa Bamishi Akinduro of the Triumphant Church of Jesus Christ at 66 in Lagos, Abeokuta Expressway, Abekoko, Ifo, Ogun State, Nigeria. For further Christian life help, contact 0805-501-6597, 0805-501-6597 by SMS or WhatsApp, or email uluwabamishi akinduro at gmail.com, O-L-U-W-A-B-A-M-I-S-E-A-K-I-N-D-U-R-O at gmail.com, O-L-U-W-A-B-A-M-I-S-E-A-K-I-N-D-U-R-O a-K-I-N-D-U-R-O at gmail.com. You can also call 003-842-4075, 003-842-4075 or 003-695-4678, 003-695-4678. Copies of this short sermon and other longer sermons in English language only can be sent to you free of charge by WhatsApp or email if you request for them. Join us for this Word of Life program, same day of the week, same time every week. Our Sunday morning service starts at 9 a.m. You are invited to fellowship with us. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen and amen.